Hello, I am Austin Mahowski, Registered Dietitian in the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit at CS Mott Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today we will review parental nutrition in the NICU for the dietitian new to the NICU. I have no commercial relationships to disclose. Our learning objectives for today are to define the role of parental nutrition or PN in the NICU, to summarize the components of PN, and to integrate PN initiation, advancement, and monitoring skills into dietitian practice. PN is indicated for both term and preterm infants in the NICU who are unable to be fed due to feeding intolerance, illness, or congenital GI conditions. Preterm infants, especially those born very low birth weight or smaller, lack the nutrient stores of term infants at birth and may have gastrointestinal immaturity. When faced with clinical instability or a complicating illness, delayed initiation or advancement of feedings often results. PN is crucial to support nutritional intakes, prevent nutrient deficits, and extrauterine growth failure. PN should be considered in all neonates in the critical care setting if unable to feed enterally or if EN is unable to meet needs for energy expenditure or growth. While the goal is to provide PN to patients who it will benefit the most, there is wide variation in its use among preterm infants and the exact population or category of preterm infant has not been well defined. However, most clinicians would agree that infants born less than 1,500 grams will benefit from PN until the feedings are established. Older and larger preterm infants still have increased nutritional needs, but with feeding protocols, expanded use of donor milk feedings, and multinutrient breast milk fortifiers, these needs can be met and PN avoided. The dietitian plays an integral role in the NICU team. The dietitian conducts nutrition assessments setting goals for energy and protein based on established recommendations considering the infant's birth weight, gestational age, and clinical status. The RD will regularly assess nutritional intakes and growth, working with the NICU team to modify the nutritional plan of care to optimize growth for each infant. Additionally, the RD serves as a critical resource to optimize nutrition delivery in complex patient cases, works with multidisciplinary team members to develop feeding practices, protocols, and guidelines. Before we get started, I'll introduce the case study patient overview throughout the presentation. This is a 27 and 4 7th week preterm female infant born via emergency C-section due to placental abruption. Birth weight is 950 grams. IV access is placed shortly after birth for most preterm infants born less than 1500 grams and in older preterm or term infants who are unable to feed and require IV fluid administration. Umbilical catheters may be venous for fluid and medication administration or arterial, which are typically used for blood pressure monitoring and drawing blood samples. Pick lines are placed in infants who may require central IV access for longer periods of time. PIVs are typically placed for infants requiring short-term non-central IV access for fluid or medications. It is important to consider IV access when ordering PN. In this example, a baby has a double lumen, UVC, and a UAC. The PN will infuse through lumen 1 of the UVC, a 5% dextrose solution through the other lumen. Through the UAC, a non-dextrose solution, such as sodium acetate, is infused. If the total fluid goal is between 80 or 100 ml per kilogram per day, this would limit the volume available for PN to between 44 and 64 milliliters per kilogram per day. Initial fluid requirements for term infants are between 60 and 80 milliliters per kilogram per day, with maintenance fluids typically around 100 milliliters per kilogram per day. Preterm infants require higher initial fluid intake to account for insensible water loss and variations in urine output as they progress through postnatal diuresis. This is often individualized to each patient's unique presentation. Maintenance IV fluids are typically between 120 and 160 milliliters per kilogram per day. PN may provide a portion or all of the fluid intake depending on the IV access and volume of enteral feedings. Total fluid goal orders are utilized to ensure careful accounting of all fluid intakes. Total energy requirements for PN are established based on birth weight, considering the amount of energy required to achieve adequate growth. The smallest infants require the highest energy intakes, with goals between 105 and 115 calories per kilogram per day. These targets are starting points. Achieving this intake may be limited by hyperglycemia or fluid restriction. 
PN energy goals for infants greater than 2,500 grams are not well defined and may vary depending on clinical status and need for growth. The protein component of PN is in the form of amino acids specifically designed for growing infants. Typical doses are between 3 and 4 grams per kilogram per day based on birth weight. Protein is a critical nutrient for growing preterm infants, and a dose of at least 3 grams per kilogram per day should be initiated within the first 24 hours of life. This practice has been shown to be safe, well tolerated, and can result in improved nitrogen balance. Some recent studies have shown a link between early amino acid intake and improved growth and neurodevelopmental scores. However, the benefit of doses greater than 3.5 grams per kilogram per day remain unclear. The carbohydrate component of PN is provided in the form of IV dextrose, which is converted into glucose. Infants, especially very preterm infants, require infusion of glucose immediately after birth to support the metabolic demand of vital organs, most importantly the brain. Glucose infusion rate is the parameter used to determine how much glucose is being provided in milligrams per kilogram per minute. There are various ways to calculate the GIR, and I've listed one here. It is important to maintain a minimum GIR of 4, with PN typically starting at a GIR between 4 and 6. Hyperglycemia is, a com is common in premature infants born less than 28 weeks, with infants born less than 25 weeks being especially at risk. For these patients, it is important to provide full amino acid and lipid doses to advance the GIR slowly, following glucose levels closely. The optimal glucose range and benefit of insulin in managing hyperglycemia is unclear. Starter PN solutions are utilized in the NICU to provide amino acids and dextrose shortly after the birth of a premature infant. These stock solutions are available 24 hours per day. They typically contain between 5 and 10% dextrose and 2 to 4% amino acids. At 50 to 80 ml per kilogram per day, they would give a dose of between 2 and 3 grams per kilogram of amino acids. Most solutions contain PN vitamins, and some solutions with calcium are also available. Looking back at our case study, the preterm infant is given central IV access after birth, a single lumen UVC and a UAC. Starter PN is initiated at 80 ml per kilogram per day. The solution is 7.5% dextrose and 4% amino acids. The UAC fluids are sodium acetate with 7.7 .7 MEQs per 100 ml, infusing at 0.5 ml per hour. The total fluid goal is set at 90 ml per kilogram per day. Let's walk through the calculations. At 7.5% dextrose, the starter PN at 80 ml per kilogram per day would provide a GIR of 4.2 mg per kilogram per minute. With 4% amino acids, this volume of starter PN will provide 3.2 grams per kilogram per day of protein. The UAC fluids at 7.7 .7 MEQs per 100 ml of sodium would provide approximately 1 MEQ per kilogram per day. In total, this would provide 92 ml per kilogram per day, a GIR of 4.2, amino acids at 3.2 grams per kilogram per day, and sodium of 1 MEQ per kilogram per day. That component of PN is provided in the form of lipid injectable emulsions, or ILEs. These provide a concentrated source of energy and essential fatty acids. The most common ILE is a 20% soybean oil lipid emulsion, which provides 10 calories per gram or 2 calories per ml. A minimum dose of 0.5 grams per kilogram per day is required to prevent essential fatty acid deficiency. ILEs can be initiated at 1 to 2 grams per kilogram per day shortly after birth, and advance to a full dose of 3 grams per kilogram per day on day of life 2. Multi-oil ILEs are utilized in term and preterm infants off-label as they are not approved in the pediatric population. The optimal source of ILE for preterm infants has not been defined. This table provides the recommended dosages for ILEs in infants. For more information about multi-oil ILEs, see the Aspen Lipid Injectable Emulsion Safety Recommendations for Neonatal and Pediatric Patients. Now, considering all three macronutrients together, a full doses of amino acids and lipids, a GIR of 9 to 10 is needed to provide a total of 90 calories per kilogram per day. A GIR of 11 to 12 will provide 100 calories per kilogram per day. And to provide 110 calories per kilogram per day, a GIR between 13 and 14 is required. Similar to other populations, electrolytes and minerals are added to PN in the NICU. Due to the unique physiology of neonates, especially premature infants, these components are added carefully over a period of days after birth. 
Sodium is typically restricted in the first few days of life to less than two MEQs per kilogram per day. Once premature infants have diuresed and urine output has stabilized, sodium is advanced to a goal of between three and five MEQs per kilogram per day. Potassium is omitted from PN in the first day of life while infants are in the prediuretic phase. Once urine output and renal function are established, potassium is added in small amounts and advanced to a goal of two to four MEQs per kilogram per day. Magnesium may be added to day one PN for term infants, but is often omitted from the first PN order for premature infants if the infant's mother received magnesium prior to or during labor. Calcium and phosphorus are critical components of infant PN, especially premature infants, as most of the mineral accretion in utero occurs during the third trimester. Both should be added to the first PN order, advanced to gold doses in a two to one calcium to phosphorus ratio. Serum phosphorus levels should be monitored closely as hypophosphatemia is an early marker of insufficient mineral intake. Chloride and acetate are added to PN as sodium or potassium salts. Chloride is typically avoided during the first few days for premature infants as they waste bicarbonate in their urine and are at risk for hypochloremic metabolic acidosis. Back to our case study, the first custom PN order for this premature infant will have amino acids at 4 grams per kilogram per day, a GIR of 4.5, and ILE at 2 grams per kilogram per day, providing 58 calories per kilogram per day. Calcium gluconate is added at 1 MEQ per kilogram per day, and sodium phos at 0.5 millimoles per kilogram per day. Macronutrients are added incrementally as described in this table. Protein should be initiated at goal and lipids can be advanced to goal by the second or third day of PN. Vitamins and trace elements are added to all PN orders. Multivitamin products are typically used according to the doses described in this table. Preterm infants have increased trace element requirements compared to term infants, so this should be considered when developing dosing plans. It is important to note that a recommended PN vitamin Product doses, preterm infants will not receive recommended intakes of vitamin D until a weight greater than three kilograms and will not receive iron as this is not included in commercial vitamin or trace element products. Looking at our patient, this table depicts typical advancement of PN macronutrients for an uncomplicated 27 week infant. Amino acids are at goal on day one, lipids to goal on day two, the GIR is advanced by 0.5 to one daily, reaching 90 calories per kilogram per day on day of life six. PN electrolytes and minerals should be initiated at low doses, taking into consideration the infant's fluid status, renal function, and lab trends. This table describes typical initiation doses, advancement or adjustment amounts, and goal intakes for PN. Components should be advanced daily towards goal intakes. PN volume and solubility limits will need to be considered when advancing calcium and phosphorus. Infants requiring PN in the NICU should be monitored closely. Weight, energy, and protein intake should be evaluated daily along with serum electrolytes and glucose. Length and head circumference measurements should be taken weekly along with lab monitoring including liver enzymes, direct bilirubin, alkaline phosphatase, and blood counts. In stable patients, electrolyte monitoring may be spaced out to one or two times weekly while critically ill patients may require increased monitoring. Vitamin and trace element status is not routinely monitored except for patients requiring long-term PN. PN patients in the NICU require daily review and evaluation of the PN order and nutrition plan. Actual versus prescribed energy and protein intakes should be evaluated. It is important to consider what progress is being made towards goals and what barriers may be preventing PN advancement. As with any intensive care unit patient, clinical status changes often impact nutrition delivery. The PN order may need to be a change daily to account for changes to the care plan in order to optimize nutrition delivery. The transition from PN to EN in the NICU is a critical period requiring careful monitoring and adjustment to ensure that nutritional intake and growth are not compromised. As feedings advance, the PN order should be adjusted daily. The intended infusion rate should be ordered also called exact volume, the total nutrition prescription PN plus EN should be calculated with a goal of providing at least 110 to 130 calories per kilogram per day, and between 3.5 and 4.5 grams of protein per kilogram per day for preterm infants. Feeding protocols are an important tool to ensure a consistent practice of EN advancement, timing of fortification, and weaning of PN. 
pn should be continued until feedings are at between 120 and 140 mls per kilogram per day and fortified if appropriate. Let's review some of the key points we've discussed. PN is an important tool in the NICU and can prevent accumulation of nutrition and growth deficits. Starter PN should be used for all preterm infants born less than 1,500 grams, with the goal of initiating amino acids at 3 grams per kilogram per day or greater. PN is a high-risk nutrition therapy that requires careful monitoring. Extremely premature infants are at risk for hyperglycemia and glucose levels should be monitored closely. The transition from PN to EN is a critical time point and careful attention should be paid to ensure energy and protein intakes are met. The NICU dietitian plays a critical role in PN management, helping to ensure its safe and appropriate use in high-risk neonates. Here is the reference list for this presentation. This educational offering was provided to you by Aspen, supported by an education grant from Reckitt Mead Johnson.